Hello everyone. Today we are going to solve an interesting combinatorics problem. This problem is from All Russian Math Olympiad 2015. This is a grade 10 problem. The problem goes like this. Suppose if you have a square grid, let's say 10 cross 10, and if you have n equal parts, if you can divide it into n equal parts with k cells each, then you are supposed to prove that you can divide it into k equal parts with n cells each. So in other words, for a particular 10 cross 10 grid, if you can divide it into 4 5 cross 5 grids or 4 grids with 25 cells and all these should be identical, then you have to prove that you can dissect this entire grid into 25 equal parts with 4 cells each. And we are going to do this. Let's get started. Here is the actual question. So a square grid is dissected into n equal figures with k cells each. Let's prove that n and k must be divisors of the square of side length or the number of unit squares along the side of the square grid. Consider a square grid. Let's say the number of unit squares along the side of the square is S. Notice that this square is dissected into n equal figures with k cells each. We do not know whether these figures are rectangles or squares or some random skewed structure. Maybe it is L-shaped structure. Let's just consider it to be random. Now notice that the total number of cells in the entire diagram is S square. And the number of cells in each of these subpart is K. And the total number of these equal figures is N. So K into N equals S square. So this imply N and K are divisors of S square. All right. Now, this is the first claim and we have proved that N and K are divisors of S square. Secondly, if, if N divides S square, then n can be written as a times b where a divides us and b divides us. Where a divides s and b divides us. Maybe there isn't a unique way but there do exist a and b such that a b equals n and a divides us and b divides us. Let's take a closer look. Why will this be true? We know that n is a divisor of s square. So let s square be some nk. Now, for example, let me consider n, sorry, let me consider S to be P1 cube P2 power 4 so that S squared equals P1 power 6 into P2 power 8. Suppose you are given that N equals P1 power 5 into P2 power 7. Now how? are we going to divide this into two 
factors, each of which is less than S. And it should divide S. So here is the idea. We first segregate the odd powers and even powers. If you have P1 power 5, then just separate out P1 power 4 and P2 power 6 and you are left with just P1, P2. If you already have an even exponent, then completely consider it in the even parts. So this would give us P1 square times P2 cube, the whole square, times P1, P2. Now, this can be written as P1 squared P2 cube times of P1 squared P2 cube times P1, P2. Now, just combine these two and we can write as P1 squared P2 cube times P1 cube P2 power 4. Now, these are the factors A and B. Clearly, A divides S and B divides S. And of course, AB equals N. That's how we arrived at that. So, we have that A divides S and B divides S. Using this strategy, one will always get the required factors A and B. How? So, the general idea goes like this. If you have the powers of prime, P1 power alpha 1, P2 power alpha 2 and so on, first, segregate the even pass to one side and the remainder which will be odd to the other side. If the exponent is odd, the remainder will be odd. If it's even, then the remainder will be zero. So, after doing this segregation, we get P1 power beta 1 and all the way till the last prime's exponent value, the whole square, times some collection of primes, say P1, P3 and so on. Clearly, this is going to be less than S. The reason, the reason is that this entire value is less than S square. Now, you are considering this separately, which is clearly less than S square and this value will be less than S. And now, you are going to take one of these as the value for the factors. So, it must be A. And beta 1, beta 2 and so on will all be less than the alpha 1 by 2 value, alpha 2 by 2 and so on. So, we can assume this. Now, for B, by similar argument, we know that beta 1 plus 1 is less than or equal to alpha 1. And this ensures that your product B, which is beta 1 plus 1, is going to be less than S. Because each exponents of these primes are less than the actual exponent of S. If you take a closer look, S square is not going to have odd powers. So, thus, if some power is odd, say, alpha 1 is odd, then, the exponent of that prime, P1, will be at least alpha 1 plus 1. Now, when you consider beta 1 plus 1, we know that beta 1 is equal to alpha 1 minus 1 by 2. So, beta 1 plus 1 would be alpha 1 plus 1 by 2, which is clearly going to be 
less than or equal to alpha 1. And the exponent of that prime in S square is alpha 1 plus 1, at least. So, we will always have the prime lesser than the exponent in S. So, we will get A divides S and B divides S. Alright, so if this is proved, we will now be able to consider it in general. Suppose say this is our required square, which we are supposed to dissect. And if we express the value n as a into b where a divides s and b divides s, and s is the number of unit squares along the sides of the square, then you may dissect this just as rectangles with dimensions a and b. That is, this length is a and this length is b. Notice that since b divides s, one may repeat this to completely encompass the structure until that height a. Now, it is just gonna be the replication of the bottom structure So we are just going to replicate the bottom structure multiple times and we also know that A divides S and the side length is S. So when you place it multiple times, it will completely cover the height of that square as the side length is a multiple of A. And thus we can easily dice it the S cross S square grid in this way. So I hope you are able to understand this and enjoy the solution, you can express your ideas and thoughts in the comments. Let's meet in the next video. Happy learning everyone. Bye.